Alright, I just want to do a quick little video on uh, LiPo batteries. Let's do a basic beginner's like overview. Um, first, I guess when we talk about LiPo batteries, we're talking about lithium polymer batteries. These are all 2S batteries. And lithium polymer, they have 2S, 3S, 4S. You know, the different volts go up. So like a 2S 7.4 volt, and it just goes up from there. You know, 3S and 4S. I think 4S is like a 14.8 volt, and 3S is like 11.1 .1 volt. But anyway, um, so that's basically what, what LiPo batteries are. Now, Roar approved, when you see this, this is a Roar approved racing. Um, so like, and that's why they're in this hard case. Like, this is Roar approved. You know, there's not a sticker on it saying it, but, and this one's not obviously this tracks one because it doesn't have really have a hard case. They want these hard cases for Roar approved. But, uh, so these are all three LiPos. They're all three a uh, 2S LiPo. This is a Trax, obviously. This is a Trax 2. This is the old connector. Kind of a weird way to look at it. And this has four millimeter bullet plugs in it. Now, uh, these are all for my race vehicles. These are for the Slash, obviously, and for my SC10. These are called stick packs, because obviously they're longer than this and they look, you know, kind of like, I guess, could be the shape of a stick, possibly, is why they call them that. These are called shorty packs, obviously, because they're shorter. Now, this has a 65C, which stands for current, so it consist consistently de delivers 65Cs. This one's only 25 C's, this one's only 25 C's. Now, and obviously 5,000 milliamp an hour, 5,800 milliamp an hour, 4,100 milliamp an hour. But with racing, you know, like I've talked about in numerous of my videos, weight is the key thing for my kind of racing. If you're in modified, weight's not really that big of a deal, but I run stocks, so like everybody knows. So I use, these even are probably a little more than I need. I only utilize, like when I charge this thing, I only utilize about 1500 milliamps an hour after one five minute run. So a five minute qualifier and a five minute main, I only use about 1500 milliamps. So technically I could probably have a 2500 or 2800, which is what I have on order, 3S LiPo to run. But anyway, so charging these things is very simple. Like you saw my video on the, uh, the high tech X1 plus plus charger, which is the charger that I have, and it is, in my other video, you can see that it's a great charger. Now, one thing that I didn't do with these, I didn't properly take care of this, and maybe you can see this pack is puffed. Right through here, it's kind of hard to see now because I've discharged this battery, but you can kind of, maybe you can't really see it too much, but what happened was this this battery puffed. I also had one of these puffed as well. I have I had three of these, but one of these puffed. So if you have a battery that puffs, the reason that it puffs, two things. One, the milliamp an hour got too low on it, which LiPo's, you have on your ESC, you can set it to where it'll turn the car off completely whenever the, the milliamp an hour gets too low. That way you don't drain the LiPo too low and you ruin it. Because like this is, I think this is like a $45 stick pack. Now these tracks, I've had this the longest out of anything, and this is by far to the best. Um, on stick packs. The Trax one, they're expensive. Like this was like $80 for this thing, like $75 or $80. It's extremely expensive, but this has been a great pack. It hasn't puffed or anything. But but in all fairness to this one, I didn't take proper care of it. And I'll explain how to do that here in a second. Same way with the other one of these I had. It did, it puffed, but I didn't take proper care of it. But um, so, uh, where was that? Let's get back to it. Uh, yeah, so puff. To avoid me puffing, don't draw your battery down too low on your milliamp an hour on a LiPo. Um, also, don't let them set for, which is what, this is how I ruined them. I let them set a long time fully charged. And that caused this one to puff and it caused my other Venom to puff. So, on that X1 charger that I have and probably almost any other, you know, decently priced charger, which I think is important if you're running LiPo batteries because these can be very dangerous and explode in your house and um, there was a guy in my town, actually, and I live in a very small town that had a LiPo battery puffing and, and uh, burned his house down with this. Uh, yeah, burned the damn house down. But, so, when you're going to let them set for a month or longer, so if you're going to let them set at least a month or longer, you need to discharge these 
which they have a feature on, on the X1 charger that I have called storage. I think almost all chargers will have it. Go to storage, plug it up, let it do its thing. It'll discharge it to where it's good to store. Obviously, that's why the saying is called storage. If you don't have a LiPo charger that has storage on it, I would suggest getting one, or you could just, if, you, if it has discharge on it, I would discharge, uh, depending on the size, I would discharge two or 300 milliamps an hour. I would, two or, yeah, discharge about two or 300 milliamps. So, that's the thing. If you're gonna let them set, like I let them set over a month, and I didn't store them, I left them fully charged, and I caught this pack to puff, it caused my other, uh, my other shorty to puff. So that's the thing. Make sure that you you discharge them and store them. This is a balancer, obviously. And this is a balance plug as well for this uh, shorty pack. But that's just a little quick video. I want to kind of, hopefully that'll help some people. These Venom are great batteries too, by the way. I, like I said, I didn't store them correctly. Um, this has been a great battery. These are really expensive. But this is actually, I've abused these batteries very much. As you can tell, this thing is... It's very rough, but yeah, I just want to do a quick video on lipos, and if you guys uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, I got another video coming up. Uh, I bought a Team Associated RC8 B3E, which is a 1.8 scale buggy. I bought it off eBay, and I got a killer deal on it, and when that comes in the mail, which should be around February the 8th, February the 9th, I'll uh, unbox it here at the table here, give everybody a quick view of it, what I paid for it, why it was a smoking deal and uh, what kind of project it's going to be for the video series. Alright, like, comment, subscribe.